then at number 10, we have a man bitten on the penis by a deadly spider. Twice. Twice. 21 year old Australian builder Jordan was bitten on his penis by a deadly poisonous redback spider whilst using the toilet. The bite caused his manhood to swell as one of the symptoms he suffered from the bite. These things take time to recover from, however, when he was back and able to work again, he used the portable toilet on his site and then he was bitten again, almost in the very same place. This has got to hurt because poof, ow. His stint of bad luck earned him the unofficial title of the unluckiest man in Australia. Moving into number 9 is Kelly Johnson. She began modeling when she was only 10 years old, but when she was 16 years old, a photographer told her that she should change her physical appearance in order to meet the beauty standards of the industry. So she took this to heart and she eventually got a nose job. Immediately after the surgery, she knew something was wrong. There was a piece of cartilage sticking out of her nostrils. There were two different sizes and shapes like what is going on there she returned to her doctors and during her second surgery he only gave her a local anesthetic and left her alone in the room she got up looked in the mirror and she saw bones and blood the second surgery was unsuccessful and I guess she will no longer be modeling which is it sucks number eight brings us to Jordan James Park this 23 year old has had nearly 50 plastic surgery procedures which total about $150,000 I mean what did he do for money this guy's only 23 years old. When he was 21 years old, he went back to get his lips done and he asked for a natural look with a little bit of definition. Well, they got bigger and bigger as time went on. There was even a time where his lips was leaking fluids. Yeah, that's not healthy at all. I mean, is this real life right now? Your lips should not be leaking anything. Twerking into number seven is Jana Stoner. This former model has double D sized breast implants in her butt. So oh, you guys thought I was going to say in her chest. No. After she had a botched surgery in Mexico, uh, that's where she went wrong first of all Mexico well she was left disfigured her butt implants are so big and loose her butt implants twerk on their own after the new plastic surgeon examined her he discovered that each implant has 650 cc of silicone and in order to fix the botched surgery she will need a Botox lift which will end up leaving her with a scar that will remove most of her tattoo on her lower back Rodrigo Elvis aka the human Ken doll makes its way onto this list at number six after going under the the knife multiple times and after having an MRSA infection on his nose, Rodrigo Elvis is at risk of losing his nose altogether. He can no longer use his nose to breathe and it's so severely damaged that he enlisted the help of a TV series boxed plastic surgeons. One of the doctors said that if he attempts to do another surgery while the skin is still healing, his nose will turn black, die and just fall off. I feel so bad for this guy. I hope that one day his nose will be able to get fixed and he's going to be able to breathe again. And now at number five is Tawny Kitten. At the height of her acting career in the 80s, she wanted to get breast enlargement, but the plastic surgeons took advantage of her. They decided to put in a very large implant, and once she was healed, she went back to the doctors to get smaller implants in. However, within six months, the implants started to slip through the mesh, and now the implants are down the bottom of her rib cage. She now has boobs on her ribs. So she got the implants removed entirely, but she had so much damage done to the tissue around her breast, the new surgeons decided to use leeches in order to restore blood flow. I mean, that must have been so traumatizing. Sagging into number four, we have Kaylin Wedler. This 34-year-old mother has to attach duct tape to her breasts in order to give them a normal shape after she had a botched breast enlargement. When she turned 19 years old, she found the closest doctor that was within her price range and she booked an appointment. She didn't even talk to what size she wanted and the plastic surgeon said that it would take only just 15 minutes. That's when you get up and run out of the office. 15 minutes is way too short to do something as intense as plastic surgery. When the bandages came off, the implants were so high and the breast tissue was so low. So essentially, it looked like she had four breasts. So she's been wearing duct tape for the last 15 years because of the spot surgery. Well, after 15 years later, she finally got them fixed. No more duct tape for her. Raji Naransingh comes into this list at number three. This poor woman was a victim of a black market injections that she received at a pumping party. You are literally asking for a botched face and injection by going to one of these sketchy parties. So I did the research and it's just a party where people just get stuff injected into them. I mean, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Definitely not a party for me. Well, a fake doctor, well, they, they injected her cheeks, her chin, her breast and buttocks with cement and tire sealant. I mean, 
mean, I have to ask, is this real life right now? If you're gonna get plastic surgery, please do your research, save up money, don't try to go cheap, and for sure don't head over to Mexico. Next up, number two, we have Hang Meku. A woman from Korea became so addicted to plastic surgery, and now she is completely unrecognizable. Her obsession led her to injecting cooking oil into her face. After many operations done to her face, it was eventually left enlarged and disfigured. When she returned home, her own family couldn't recognize her. Her family tried to enlist her in a mental facility so she can get help with her addiction, but it didn't work. Amazingly, she actually found another doctor who was willing to give her silicone injections into her already disfigured and swollen face, and she even gave her a syringe and silicone, and that's so she can self-inject. Now at number one spot, we have Stanwood Elkus. A botched surgery left this man with erectile dysfunction, and decades later, he decided he would get his revenge. He traveled 55 miles to a medical complex in Newport Beach to visit the doctor who accidentally caused him to have erectile dysfunction. When the doctor entered the examination room, Stanwood pulled out his Glock and squeezed the trigger 10 times. The jury found him guilty of first degree murder and the 79 year old man was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison having that erectile dysfunction. That is so brutal. Definitely not a reason why to kill a man. But it, I guess his life got so bad. Starting off this countdown we have the pizza. TikTok user Lloydie and Checkers was planning on having a relaxing bath. He filled up the tub and even put a blue bath bomb in. He set up a tray to enjoy his pizza while in the tub. Honestly, that would have been so relaxing. Sadly, before he even got to enjoy it, the bathtub tray collapsed and his pizza falls into the water. That is beyond sad. That pizza looked delicious. Not only did he lose his pizza, but he probably had to drain that bath water as well. Because who wants to bathe with pizza particles floating around you? Certainly not me. Coming in at number 9, meet Britain's unluckiest man. If that sounds like a Daily Mail headline, it's because he has been the focus of many national tabloids discussing his ill fortune. They say a cat has 9 lives, but John Lyne seems to have the lives of 2 cats. The British man is in his 60s and during his time he's been in over 17 accidents. He has been struck by lightning, run over by a van and a bus, he was hit in the face by a catapulted rock which smashed out 8 of his teeth, he nearly drowned, he fell down a manhole damaging his legs and back, he drunk bleach as a child and he fell out of a tree and broke his arm. Whew. John jokingly vowed to never leave the house again, although he did say that he considers himself to be lucky having survived his mishaps. Yeah, so next up, Eric Nori gives John Line a good run for his money. He's coming in at number 8. Dubbed America's unluckiest man, Eric has been struck by lightning, bitten by a deadly rattlesnake, punched by monkeys twice, and survived a shark attack. The odds on this kind of misfortune are absolutely insane. The chance of being attacked by a shark alone are one in 11.5 million. Eric needed skin grafts to save his damaged leg, but afterwards, he was kind of in good spirits. Unlucky or awesome, you guys decide at number 7, we have the only known meteorite victim, Anne Hodge. Hit by a meteorite, that's gotta be kinda cool. I guess you survive it, I guess. Anne was hit by a space rock at her home in Alabama in 1954. She received a whopping great bruise as the rock tore through her house and hit her on the hip. The rock was still warm from burning through the Earth's atmosphere, which cool. Not only did she get hit though, the rock started a bitter money battle. Meteorites are precious things. First scientists took it to test on it, then her landlord tried to claim ownership of it. In the end she was given it and she hoped to sell it like a man down the road had when a piece hit his property. She was unable to sell it, suffered a nervous breakdown and then died in a nursing home age 52. Yeesh. Imagine winning the lottery, then losing the ticket. Well, that's exactly what happened to Martin and Kay Tot at number six. Martin and Kay Tot won three million pounds in the lottery in 2001. The only problem is, they accidentally threw away their ticket. The couple tore their house up looking for the winning ticket, which contained the same numbers that they played every week. 
In the end, they contacted Camelot, the lottery officiator, who decided that their claim was genuine. But as they had contacted them outside of the allotted time for lost tickets, they could not give the pair their winnings. Harsh. What is worse, Martin sought legal action that cost him his money, his mind, and his wife. Gutted. Coming in at number five, we have Zara Zelenak. Anyone caught up in a terror attack is extremely unlucky. But Zara, a 21 year old Australian killed in a terror stabbing in June 2017, was a Especially unlucky. Not only had Zara moved from Australia to England to become an au pair, she had narrowly escaped an attack months before on Westminster Bridge, and she had tickets to the ill fated Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, but she decided not to go. On the evening she was killed, she was not planning on going out. She was instead supposed to be babysitting, but then the child's grandmother stepped in at the last minute, meaning that she was able to meet up with her friends in Borough Market. Sadly, she was stabbed when she became became separated from her friends. Coming in at number 4, we have Roy Sullivan who was struck by lightning 7 times. Roy's story is an incredible one, but in the end, a very sad one. Roy was a park ranger for most of his life in Virginia in the United States. Roy was first struck by lightning in a crazy storm in 1942 when he was just 30 years old. He was hiding out from a storm in a fire tower that was struck and ignited. He escaped, but he was then struck in the leg. He was again struck by lightning in 1969 while he was in his truck. Then again, he was struck in 1970 in his front yard, in 1972 in a ranger station, in 1973, he was struck on patrol in a park, in 1976, he was just out in the open, and in 1977, he was struck while he was out fishing. Like, what on earth? He even said that he thought that clouds would often follow him. His wife was also struck once. The chance of being hit by lightning are 1 in 10,000, but I can't even calculate what the odds are of being hit 7 times over and surviving. Apparently, it is 1 in 22 septillion, which is a number I can't even imagine, let alone write. Sadly, in the end, he killed himself aged 71. Coming into number 3, we have Melanie Martinez. Melanie may well be one of the unluckiest women in America. The Louisiana resident was strongly considering moving after her fifth house was raised by a storm. She lost her first house in 1965 during Hurricane Betsy, her second in 1985 during Hurricane Juan, then a third was lost to George in 1998, and a fourth lost to Katrina in 2005. TV shows Hideous Houses decided to offer Melanie a house makeover, spending $20,000 as a gesture of goodwill to a woman who had lost her home four times over. Then, just months later, Hurricane Isaac came through and destroyed her fifth home along with all of the hard work the TV show had put in. Luckily, she was rescued from the roof of her house with her family and her three dogs. Coming in at number two, we have the Flanagan family. Initially considered lucky, 14 year old Steve was at a neighbor's house when Pan Am Flight 103 smashed into his house, killing his parents and his sisters just four days before Christmas. The incident happened that night when terrorists blew up a bomb on a plane flying over Lockerbie in Scotland. It ended up being the demise of the whole family. Stephen's brother David had already left home when his family were killed. Five years almost to the day after the tragedy, David frittered away his compensation money and died of a drugs overdose in Thailand. After trying to get his life together, Stephen went out for a drink with friends 12 years after the tragedy, and after the pub, he was run over by a train. My goodness, so three members of the family killed by a plane, one killed by a drugs overdose, and one hit by a train. Like, what are the odds? Finally, the horrors of the Lockerbie bombings had done with this family. Finally, coming in at number one, this guy was so unlucky, his death came by total bad luck, and it started a war that killed 75 million people. That is one spell of misfortune. That's right, coming in at number one, we have Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand of Austria had an unfortunate string of luck prior to his death. A lot of his family members died untimely deaths, including his cousin who committed suicide and his father who died of typhoid. Ferdinand was in Sarajevo at a tense time, and the Black Hand Gang attempted to kill him by throwing a grenade at his car. Ferdinand 
Ferdinand and his wife were unharmed, but were later killed when their driver did a U turn near a cafe. Now, in this cafe was sitting a defeated member of the gang who originally tried to kill him, who was having a coffee and consoling himself. He then saw the car do a U turn, he seized his second chance and shot Ferdinand and his wife, which is very unlucky. But unluckier still, it resulted in Austria declaring war on Serbia, which then led to other nations declaring war and beginning the first ever world war. Goodness. Starting off this botched list, at number 10, we have Jocelyn Wildenstein, who is also known as Catwoman. She is literally the poster child for plastic surgery gone wrong. Not really a poster you want to be on. Apparently, she has undergone dozens of plastic surgeries in an effort to win back her husband. She is rumored to have spent more than $4 million on plastic surgery because her husband has a weird big cat fetish. Even though to the rest of us, she looks like one big botched plastic surgery disaster, she apparently got exactly what she wanted and she's very happy with what she sees in the mirror. So you know what, we can't really judge her then. Coming in at number 9, we have the cabinet fail. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. No. Oh my god. Imagine waking up and finding your kitchen looking like this. I would cry. I would just go back to bed. Like, I'm, there's just no way that I'm dealing with that. It looks like most of their dishes, though, were plastic, so that's good because can you imagine, like, having your fine china in those cabinets and waking up and it's all shattered? Wow, that would be so sad. Oh, I'm sure that that woke them up, though. That's crazy. Like, I would sue the contractors. Whoever installed those cabinets, I sound like a Karen, but whoever installed those cabinets, like they did not do a good job. But the, again, then again, that is an awful lot of stuff in the pantries, so maybe it was just too heavy. I don't know, either way, that's just, that's just too much to deal with. Too much. I would cry. In our eighth spot, we have the snowstorm. This poor man forgot to roll up his window and overnight they were hit with a massive snowstorm. He woke up to find the inside of his car completely covered in snow. I bet he did not go to work that morning. Like he had to call his boss and be like, hey sir, yeah, my car is filled with snow. Uh, I can't drive, so I can't come in. His car looks like something Frosty the Snowman would drive. I mean, I think we all have experience like leaving your car's sunroof open and then all of a sudden it starts pouring rain and you have to run outside and close the windows. But I feel like this is way worse. Like he has to shovel out all that snow and then defrost his car. Because as long as it's cold on the outside, that snow ain't going anywhere. Moving on at number seven, we have the bricks. If you're, so it says, if you were having a bad day, remember that we unloaded 6,000 bricks in the wrong address. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. How do you mess that one up? How? How do you mess that one up? And how do the people at the address, like, how aren't they, like, if it's a home, how come they're not like, uh, sir, you have the wrong address. We did not order 6,000 bricks. That is, I feel bad. But it would be a good workout. Like after that, you'd be like, I'm jacked. I just lifted 6,000 bricks and then I had to reload them and then got fired and then, wow. I don't even, what would you even tell your boss? Like, hey, I screwed up. Me and this dude screwed up and now there are 6,000 bricks at the wrong address. I feel so bad, but also it's kind of funny. Coming in at number six, we have the bathroom demolition. This next person picked the wrong time to get their bathroom redone. He got most of his bathroom ripped up, including his toilet and sink. And then the governor ordered all non-life sustaining businesses to close, including construction and contractors. This is the current state of their bathroom. That sucks. I would cry. Like, what did they do? Like, did they go in that bucket? Where did they do their business? I really hope that there was some sort of exception made for the family, you know, to at least get a toilet installed or else that would really suck. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the food. No, <gasps> he throws it. No, come on, buddy. No. my gosh. I feel so sorry for him. Like he's carrying his McDonald's. He's super happy. He trips on the step and everything's gone. 
Oh, that breaks my heart. Like, I feel bad. You could see how angry that guy was. Oh, man. I would just go and, and cry. Like, there's nothing else you can do except go back and order the exact same meal. That is so frustrating. I mean, he probably could have saved it. You know, he didn't have to throw the cup or kick the food. He didn't have to. He probably could have saved some fries and, like, the burgers in the box or whatever, the meals in the box. Some of those drinks look okay, you know, maybe they spilt a little, so he could have saved some, but it's still, that is so frustrating. Ugh, I just wanna give him a hug. <laughs> In our fourth spot, we have the money stash. You've heard of people saying their dog ate their homework, but what about their dog eating their secret stash of money? This was posted on Reddit by user BullfrogOscar22. His dog got into the box where he kept his rainy day stash and the dog ate it. Now, I don't know how much money was in that box, but that is devastating. I mean, Canadian money smells like maple syrup, so I would understand if a dog would try to eat that, but what's the appeal with regular old bills? Also, us Canadians have waterproof and rip-proof money now, so this wouldn't happen to us, just saying. No, but in all seriousness, I feel so bad for this guy. No matter if it was $100 or $500, it sucks to lose money. What's worse is that he also had to fish through his dog's waist to find the rest of the bills. His plan was to gather all the scraps from the bills and then mail it to the US Treasury. Apparently, and I did not know this, they will reassemble the bills and then send you a check for the amount. But I don't think they'll accept poopy dog bills. Coming in at number three, we have the slippery day. So this is footage of a man named Alan Bates from Plymouth, Devon. It was snowing like crazy and super icy out. And CCTV footage captured him trying to just get inside of his house. Like imagine having a long day at work. You're tired and all you wanna do is get inside, flop down on your couch and eat a warm dinner. But you can't even make it inside your house. He fell a number of times trying to get inside. Honestly, he's pretty persistent though. After my second attempt, I would have just laid on the ground, waiting for someone to rescue me. His next attempt was to shimmy alongside of his house and then crawl to his door. That didn't work either. He ends up getting some piece of cloth or a towel or something and putting it down on the ground and using it to help him crawl along. And it somehow worked. After several failed attempts, he finally made it inside. So there you go, folks. Persistence is key. In our second spot, we have them brownies. We got them brownies. We got them brownies. We got them brownies. Oh no, okay. That's so funny. They were so excited going fishing or whatever that we got them brownies. We got them. Jeff, I swear that is the last time we're ever making you carry the food again. God damn it. You dropped the fries back there and now you're dropping the brownies. I just love the guy's face. Like he was in such disbelief. He was like, what are the odds of that happening? I don't even know how he managed. He like turned and it hit the railing and then it fell. Wow, that sucks. But at least, you know, they see, they were laughing. It was, it was funny to them, which is good. You need humor when this kind of stuff happens. Humor helps you get through everything. And in our number one spot, we have the doggy doo-doo. So it says, my brand new Roomba ran over my puppy's poo and proceeded to clean the rest of the home. Oh no, that would make me sick. I feel so bad. This is why you don't trust robots and Roombas, like, oh, I can't even look at the image. It's so upsetting. Imagine coming home and you're like, what's that smell? And then you look and there's poop everywhere. No, I, I don't even know. I would just move out. 
I'd be like, this is not my problem. Or hire someone to clean it. Like, your house would be stank for a couple of days. It's disgusting. Ugh. If you guys know where that's from, you know where that's from. That's bad. That is rough. That's why this is on the number one, okay? That is the worst of the worst. I'm just glad that they don't have carpets. Can you imagine? That would be even worse. Like, once it's rubbed in there, good luck.